Welcome to the Amplifier Podcast, the show where the best in business discuss how you can grow your business best. I'm Wyatt McPherson. I produce this show. In this episode, Don Cooper is joined by author of Personality Isn't Permanent and Willpower Doesn't Work, Dr. Benjamin Hardy. Ben will be with us for three episodes, and in this first one, they discuss how future goals best grow businesses and why some leaders are better at it than others, along with how you can change yourself for the better and get to accomplishing what matters most. They provide tons of insight that I know you will get a great deal of value from, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss the next two episodes with Dr. Ben Hardy. And when you're ready to start your own podcast or kickstart marketing for your business, be sure to visit us at AmplifierX.com. But as always, I truly do hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Amplifier Podcast. Now, please take it away, Don. Good day, everyone. It's uh, Don Cooper here with my partner, Wyatt McPherson. Today, I am super excited to have a friend and colleague on here, Dr. Benjamin Hardy. A little bit of background on Ben before we get going. Dr. Benjamin Hardy has a PhD in organizational psychology. He is a uh, best-selling author. His previous book, Willpower Doesn't Work, um, got him to that level uh, prior to that. And in addition, his blogs have been read over 100 million times with contributions in places like Forbes, Fortune, CNBC, Cheddar, and Big Think. Um, and between 2015 and 2018, uh, Benjamin was the uh, top read blogger on medium.com. Ben, I got to tell you, you know, I, I read um, Willpower Doesn't Work. It was actually um, uh, Dan Sullivan gave me that book uh, in one of my uh, strategic coach workshops. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I thought, you know, there was some powerful things in that book. And I've heard you speak uh, more recently that you, you certainly toiled over this next book and felt just with collaboration that it was 10 times better than, uh, than your first uh, major market book. I got to tell you, this is the best book I've read in at least five years. I certainly felt a lot of personal connection in it, both in terms of, uh, you know, so many of the examples you use, both for me personally, and I know you're uh, an organizational, uh, your, your PhD is in organizational psychology, and I, I've always been fascinated with personality and performance relative to how people work. So I, I, I use a lot of tools and, um, you know, within my businesses with my team to try to help elevate myself and, and elevate them. So, you know, I certainly felt the connection there. Um, the, the equal part is, you know, I'm in, um, I'm in the, what I call the strategic coach ecosystem that you are in with, um, with Dan, with Joe. And so there's so many examples in there of people we both know and other works and, and the insights from people like Sean Stevenson and Cameron Harold and Joe Polish, um, uh, obviously Dan Sullivan. And, you know, I was reading this and it was like, you know, this book is just sort of showing me, a, you know, summarizing a journey that I've been going through for the last three years myself in terms of uh, how do I create my future self? And this idea in your book of your future self is just so compelling that I couldn't put this book down. I, I read it, uh, the, you know, went about six weeks ago or so when I was heading to a, a meeting at Joe's place, but I was reading it just to kind of go through it the first time. And I was reading it while I was traveling this last couple of days, I've been reading it again in, in preparing to, uh, for us to meet. And I, I was actually using, um, you know, some voice to text to have the book read to me uh, while I could type notes. And I wrote 10 pages of notes, 10 pages of things that just stood out to me that were highly relevant and powerful. And I was doing it, uh, trying to get ready to have a conversation with you. So I, 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 I just said to my wife a few minutes ago, uh, before, uh, before coming down to my office to, to meet up with you, I can't wait to finish the podcast with Ben so I can dig back in and read it with intent a third time because I know I'm going to experience it different um, and get even more value out of it uh, in the next run. Cause I felt like I was rushing with all the insight that I felt in there. The book is just packed with so much actionable insight. It's so relevant. And I think people uh, can apply it personally. 
you can look at it. I found so many examples in the book where I could think about my family and or my team that I could help them with parts of what you were talking about in the book. And certainly organizations, uh, companies um, who uh, are trying to create an intentional culture um, can use so much of what's in your book to really help so many other people thrive. So I, I literally cannot say enough good things about, about this book. I'm super excited. Thank you, man. I, I don't want, really... I don't want this to be, I, I don't want this to be a big chair party about how much I, uh, how much I <laughs> well, I'm it, but... grateful you like it. It was, you know, it's funny. I wrote this book. It took a year and a half. And then I wrote, well, uh, I wrote who not how, which obviously we can share with you if you haven't gotten it yet. That comes out in October. I wrote that, which will be very relevant to you, obviously, but you'll know that world a lot, but, uh, I was forced yep. to write who not how in about four months. <laughs> and so, but, uh, it, it went a lot faster after having gone through the pain of this book. But uh, yeah, man, I'm really glad you like it. It's, it. There's definitely a lot in there that I think is relevant for anyone who's wanting to live an intentional and courageous life. So Ben, you're, you're, you, you did a PhD in organizational psychology. And you know, in your book, you talk about how you kind of changed course from thinking about being more of an individual counselor to organizational psychology from uh, a trip you made to China. Can you just comment on that a little bit? I'm really intrigued by the you know, your insights on organizational psychology. Yeah. I mean, I, I was not totally clear on the idea that I wanted to be a therapist or a counselor. I mean, I thought it could be really meaningful and obviously it would be a different application to what I do now, but I also wanted to be a writer and I wanted to make a, I won't say bigger impact, but more of a broad impact. Um, Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know that there were other options because of what I was being taught, you know, where I did my undergrad. And so it was, it was cool because I, when I was traveling through China, and this was after I got rejected the first time to graduate school. So I applied to graduate school the first time got rejected, I think by 14 or 15 schools, was obviously kind of ashamed or just kind of, it was, it was a bummer because I had worked so hard. I mean, I was like a straight A student, had spent hours and hours and hours trying to prepare myself. And I figured I was prepared, um, but didn't really work out. And I, so that meant we had to live in my in-laws basement for another year, which was kind of like freak didn't really love that idea, but we were, we were traveling in China and I I met a guy at like a church. We were in a church and he was, he was just a super charismatic guy. And uh, he told me that he was the leader over the Asian region of Apple. And I was like, well, what does that mean? He's like, well, like I'm the guy who trains all of the leadership of Apple throughout Asia. I'm like, whoa, (laughs) Uh, how does how did you get that job? You know, and he he told me that he got there in kind of a weird roundabout way because he had formerly been an attorney. But he said, but my 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 boss, who really is the guy who guides all this, he's an organizational psychologist. And I was like, what? I'm like, that sounds so great. That sounds amazing. Uh, and so then I did some research and realized this would be a really cool application of what I want to do. So as soon as I got home from China, I started throwing out applications to programs. I was way behind on those applications but was immediately able to get into a program that that was a great fit and that ended up being Clemson. And how do you see that background and your writing, you know, helping fulfill your future self, your, your vision um, of helping? I mean, my future self in many ways is probably going to, to some degree. So I served a church mission when I was 20 years old and it totally changed my life. Um, and that, that is the reason I went into psychology in the first place is because I watched how much my own life changed after having a kind of traumatic and troubled childhood. Um, not that I view it that way anymore. Actually, I view my past with, with a really positive lens. I don't think I would be even doing or thinking the way I did if I hadn't gone through what I'd gone through. So I believe it happened for me. In many ways, I believe my life is really, I'm really grateful. And I have a great relationship with my dad who was a drug addict for a lot of my life. He's an amazing guy. But yeah, it was really the mission. And so I think my future self is actually, I, I got the PhD because I wanted to understand leadership. I wanted to understand teams. I wanted to understand groups. Um, and I think in the future, my future self is probably going to actually be working directly with missionaries, but from a leadership perspective. That's where I will, really where I want my life to go. I mean, I'll continue to write popular press books that are not necessarily mm-hmm. spiritually bending. You know, they're more, you know, for just to the general masses. Um, but I do think my future self, probably two to three years from now, is going to step away from a lot of the entrepreneurial things I'm doing. And I'm going to be more directly doing more missionary style work in a leadership capacity, just because that's kind of an audience. You know, Dan talks a lot about who do you want to be a hero to? 
those are the people I want to be a hero mm-hmm. to in the work that they're doing. Cause that's where my biggest ahas happen in my own life. And so I, I wanted to get a PhD so that I could better fulfill that role. Uh, and writing this book is going to be the vehicle through which I set my life up to do that. You know, my, my goal is to sell 10 million copies of this book. And I think if I can do that, and through the process of doing that, not only will I be in a financial situation, but I'll go through kind of some of the psychological transitions and just prepare myself for, for that work that I'm excited for in my future. I recently read um, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. What he, so he talks, so obviously his story was he was a Jewish, you know, he was a Jew and, and he was in the Holocaust. And so he was in there and he looked at the whole experience from the perspective of like a psychiatrist. And one of the big mm-hmm. things he said was, is that the moment that people lost a, a sense of purpose towards the future, they died very quickly in the concentration camp. And so like a lot of people, they would be like looking forward to like Christmas and they had the belief that they'd get released by Christmas and Christmas would come by. And if they didn't get released, which they usually didn't, waves of people would die because their sense of future disappeared. And so he talks a lot about how like once you lose a sense of purpose, your life loses meaning. And that's always based on a future goal. Like you, and so he's big on that. Like he was big that like those who maintained hope towards the future were far more resilient and they didn't cave to the situation And so obviously that's got huge implications for future self and what we talk about in the book, but it has huge implications for me and for you because we have a huge future that we're working towards. And when the, you know, I love the Dan quote, the bigger the future, the better the present. Make your future bigger than your past, right? Yeah. You know, for some people who have been working on this personal journey for a while, they might have a vision for the next year or a three-year vision. I know I just finished my vivid vision for my, uh, for one of my businesses. And I also have a 25 year purpose for myself in terms of what I want to accomplish. So those things give me grounding of where I'm going. Most people don't have that. I think. Yeah. What he says is if you don't have a exciting future that is giving your life meaning and purpose, then what you're going to do is, is you're going to have so much meaninglessness in your present that you're going to do anything and everything you can to distract yourself. You know, that could be through drugs, technology, but if you don't have, you know, a future is where you get your sense of purpose and that's what gives your current life meaning so that you can then go through whatever process is required to becoming the person you want to be. Um, And that, you know, whether that's courage or whatever learning that you have to go through and transformation, if you don't have that sense of purpose of that future self, then you don't even know who you are in the present and life lacks meaning. And so you're just going to distract yourself and you're going to be probably caught up in all the fear and confusion going on. One example that's sort of uh, both entrepreneur and and personal is uh, my oldest son. Um, He's started a, uh, a, an entrepreneurial venture kind of inspired by following me. And, but you know, this one business was a little bit stuck because it was, you know, he was trying to get to a place of, building a concept application so he could get investors because this was a big AI, artificial intelligence uh, application that I think could really change some things in the industrial space. But all of a sudden he was stuck because he couldn't move forward and, you know, wasn't, uh, didn't have enough funding to take him to the next place. And he was kind of stagnant. And all of a sudden he kind of was being really frustrated by uh, a future. And I helped them pivot, you know, to move towards that with a more micro goal. Hey, in the next 90 days, here's another entrepreneurial idea that you could take action on immediately um, to start to generate some, you know, uh, some uh, immediate success that's going to fund that bigger goal. And because he had this sort of three year idea, but he was sort of stuck. And what's happened in the last two weeks, I've coached him kind of three times a week and given him actions to take through, you know, and making him make commitments um, to himself. But to me, from an accountability standpoint, he took those actions, built video, built a website, got going. And in two weeks, he's landed two clients. And his whole personality has sort of changed just because he's starting to see a future because, you know, he's taken action towards it. I think that was really really uh, powerful. And I've had two other experiences like that in the last couple of weeks with some entrepreneurial friends who were in our network that reached out to me to go, you know, to who were kind of stuck with kind of being down the weeds on action. Yeah. It's really fun. No, I mean, it's so cool that you're helping him do that. I love the idea of breaking it down to like a micro goal, you know, and like, I mean, that's how you build confidence. Sometimes it still takes courage and intention, but now that he's got those two clients, 
his future's a lot bigger, you know, cause like he now has the confidence that he can get more. And so, yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, and you know, Dan talks about, you know, setting 90 day goals and, and living in 90 day chunks that you can take action on and, and then measuring, you know, you know, and you speak about it in the book about the gap and the gain and measuring your progress by looking back as opposed to looking to the horizon and living in that. You know, and it's the same situation. It's totally about how you perceive it um, and, and how you how you choose to view it. You know, you, you talk about um, uh, a few things in your book. Um, it's just around how you, you know, your, the story you tell yourselves and, and, uh, and the, how you experience things. It's really insightful. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Amplifier podcast. If you wish to get in contact with or read any of their books, Don Cooper and our beloved guest, Dr. Benjamin Hardy, then you can do so anytime at the links in the description. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode and be sure to leave us a five-star rating. It truly does help us out a lot. Thank you so much for listening again, and we will see you next time on the Amplifier podcast.